spirit of Detroit, a 16-foot bronze statue at the City County Building, a statue that stands for all those ties which bind a city and its people together. The story really begins on August 2nd, 1955, when the Detroit Wayne Joint Building Authority commissions world-famous sculptor Marshall M. Fredericks to create a statue. The story continues as the artistic talent of Marshall Fredericks conceives an idea and shapes a form. After months of creative effort, a scale model was on its way to Oslo, Norway for casting. With the casting complete, the coloring or patinating begins. Brushes stipple an acid onto the bronze. The acid oxidizes the bronze, turning it to a light green. More applications of acid follow until the right depth of color enriches the great bronze casting. This beautiful green produced in a few weeks by craftsmen of Norway would take nature several hundred years to duplicate. Patinating completed, other artisans fashion a steel framework to protect the statue during its sea journey to Detroit. A wooden platform and braces add strength, and the statue loses all appearance of a work of art under heavy pads of burlap. At the Oslo docks, the spirit of Detroit takes its place among the sea freight bound for far-off ports. The Thomas Schulte, a German freighter chartered by the Fjell Line, stands ready. This is the only ship large enough to stow the statue below decks, yet small enough to navigate the old St. Lawrence Seaway route. The figure rests face down on its platform as it is lowered slowly. Here are 12 tons of sculpture and framing that must be handled as gently as a basket of eggs. More freight comes aboard. Then the spirit of Detroit begins its journey. It is a journey spun out of 4,800 miles across the Atlantic, up the St. Lawrence Seaway route and through the Great Lakes. Then the goal is reached, the port of Detroit, on September 20th, 1958. When the Thomas Schulte makes port, a new chapter unfolds, the unloading. With the first sling of freight, come the four miniatures of the Spirit of Detroit statue. Skillful hands open the crate, and sculptor Marshall Fredericks shows the replicas to the customs agent and the customs broker. Seamen remove the secondary decking to reveal the Spirit of Detroit safe and secure, still in the protection of wood, burlap, and steel. Again, the gantry cranes swing out and the slings slip into place. Dramatically, the spirit of Detroit rises from the dark hold and the sun, perhaps symbolically, bursts through the overcast of a late summer day. On the dock below, the special heavy moving equipment stands ready. Watching the unloading progress are city and county officials. The statue swings toward American soil. a tight fit on the truck. Not more than room for a lead pencil to spare at each end. Mr. Fredericks checks the heavy padding to make sure there isn't any damage. The shippers and sailors have done their work well. The statue is unscarred. 
almost home. Only one more short trip to the city county building. The citizens of Detroit gather in anticipation, for the statue has meaning to all of them. The crane operator waits for his signal, then gears grind. Two cranes take over now to tilt the figure into a sitting position. It's an exciting moment. Three years of artistry, work, and waiting are being revealed in an object of rare beauty. Happy over the coming of the statue is the sculptor's family. Twins Carl and Christopher, Francis, Rosalind, and Mr. and Mrs. Fredericks. Five-year-old Suzanne missed the excitement. Grills, steel doweling, bronze, and cement will soon fix it permanently to the pedestal. And here on its marble base, the statue will stay through the ages to remind all who see it that the spirit of Detroit endures forever. A statue comes home. A statue, yes, but more. An idea, a dream, a hope, caught in imperishable bronze. Mr. Fredericks receives the first impromptu congratulations from his son, Christopher. Three days later, September 23, 1958, city dignitaries, county officials, and friends gather at the city county building for the formal dedication. Mayor Eugene I. Van Antwerp, secretary of the Detroit Wayne Joint Building Authority, serves as master of ceremonies. Reverend Alan A. Zahn, president of the Detroit Pastors Union, gives the invocation. The Department of Parks and Recreation Civic Center Chorale sings the national anthem. Representing the government of Norway, is the Honorable Elvin Berg, the acting Royal Norwegian Consulate General. As the dedication continues, the crowd grows. Highlighting the dedication are comments from the sculptor, Marshall M. Fredericks. Senior Edward J. Hickey of the Roman Catholic Archdiocese of Detroit blesses the statue. Representing the Wayne County Board of Auditors is Charles F. Edgecombe. Mayor Louis C. Miriani gives the official greeting and accepts the spirit of Detroit for the city.
by Morris Adler pronounces the benediction to close the dedication. The statue has taken its place as a permanent part of the fabric of the city. And sculptor Fredericks receives well-deserved congratulations on his outstanding achievement. Just one more, please, the press cameraman asks as the sculptor and city fathers become a part of this moment of history. This is perhaps the end of one chapter in the story of the spirit of Detroit. But it is the beginning of another chapter. That part of the story of the statue's deep spiritual significance. The spirit of Detroit gives the ultimate finishing touch to the spiritual emphasis and significance of the symbol wall of the city county building. For this Vermont marble wall, Mr. Fredericks incorporated two great 10 and a half foot seals, one of Wayne County and the other, the city of Detroit. Below the seals, this inscription. Now the Lord is that spirit. And where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Highlighting this scriptural concept is the gilded bronze symbol of God, a perfect sphere, complete in itself, with no beginning, no end. The rays represent all light and life coming from the Almighty. The gilded family group represents the idea that God, through the spirit of man, is evident in the family, the noblest human relationship. This spirit of Detroit will stand for centuries as a monument to the city of Detroit and to Wayne County. And with this great figure to remind its citizens, the true spirit of liberty should long flourish in Detroit.